بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم today إن شاء الله we are going to talk about the permanent mandibular anterior teeth the central lateral incisors and the canine so with this video we will complete the dental anatomy of the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth now we will we will start with the permanent mandibular incisors I decided to discuss both of them the central and lateral incisors together because they are very very similar to each other so you can see in the picture here this is the central the mandibular central incisor uh, and the same landmarks are going to be found in the mandibular lateral incisor which are the cervical line the cingulum the lingual fossa a single lingual fossa mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge and incisor ridge this is from lingual aspect now we will speak from incisal aspect we can see the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge we can see the syngram and we can see incisal ridge I told you that the mandibular central incisor is very similar to the mandibular uh, lateral incisor and one of the similarities is the proximal contacts the proximal contacts as you can see in the central incisor and lateral incisor the mandibular ones are the same mesially and distally all are found in the incisal third now we will speak about the differences between the mandibular central incisor and the mandibular lateral incisor we will start with the most important difference between these two teeth uh, in the mandibular central incisor the incisal edge is almost at a right angle we are speaking here in the mandibular central incisor the incisal edge is almost at a right angle to align bisecting the crown labiolingual. This, is, this feature is characteristic of the tooth and serves as a mark of identification and differentiation between the mandibular central and lateral incisors. What does that mean? The incisal edge. This line represents the incisal edge. Is at a right angle to align bisecting the crown labiolingual. This line is bisecting the crown labiolingually so the incisal edge is at a right angle to align bisecting the crown labiolingually we can see that this angle is almost a right angle and this feature is used to identify and differentiate the central the mandibular central incisor from the mandibular lateral incisor while in the lateral incisor the incisal edge is not at approximate right angle to align bisecting the crown labiolingually this end is wrong to align bisecting the crown labiolingually what does that mean this is the incisal edge this line represents the incisal edge and this line is the line bisecting the crown labiolingual so we can see that this is not a right angle this is not approximately a right angle why is that because the incisal edge follow the curvature of the mandibular arch follow the curvature of the mandibular arch which gives the crown the appearance of being twisted around twisted slightly on its root base that means that uh, the incisal edge following the curvature of the mandibular arch so the crown as a whole appear to be twisted like this slightly on its root base so this is the main difference between the mandible central incisor and the mandible lateral incisor now we will speak about the angles in the mandibular central incisor the mesial incisor angle this one is a sharp right angle the distal incisal angle, this one, is also a sharp right angle. While in the mandibular lateral incisor, we can see the mesial incisal angle is some have some rounding. While the distal incisal angle, which is this one, is more rounded than mesial incisal angle. This is one of the differences between the mandibular central incisor and the mandibular lateral incisor. We will speak about the chronology in the mandibular central incisor 
eruption of tooth occur this is the permanent one eruption of tooth occur at the age of six to seven years while the root completed by the uh, age of nine years while in the mandibular lateral incisor in the lateral incisor eruption occur at the uh, age of seven to eight years uh, almost one year after the central incisor and the root completed by the age of 10 years also after one year of the central incisor so those was uh, that was the uh, discussion of the mandibular central and lateral incisor now we will start with the permanent mandibular canine the permanent mandibular canine we will start with the landmarks also the permanent mandibular canine also resembles the permanent maxillary canine so we can see the same landmarks almost the same landmarks the cervical line the cingulum and we can see the that it has two lingual fossa as the maxillary canine the mesial lingual fossa and the distal lingual fossa we have the mesial marginal ridge this is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge also we have a mesial cusp ridge this is the mesial cusp ridge and this is the distal cusp ridge and also we have a lingual ridge this is the lingual ridge and also we have uh, we said that the lingual ridge connect the cingulum to the cusp tip this is from lingual aspect from incisal aspect we can see the mesial cusp ridge or mesial cusp ridge distal cusp ridge and we can see the syndrome the lingual fossa in the mandibular canine is less developed uh, the lingual ridge sorry the lingual ridge is less developed so these are the landmarks in general because we have a note because maxillary and mandibular canines bear a close resemblance to each other direct comparison comparisons are made with the maxillary canine in describing the mandibular canine so we will describe the mandibular canine in relation to the maxillary canine the first difference the mesial outline of the crown of the mandibular canine is almost straight with the mesial outline of the root this is the first the first note you can see that if we draw a line here that the mesial outline of the tooth including the crown and the root is almost together so the mesial outline of the crown is with the mesial outline of the root this is the first difference from the maxillary canine also another difference in the mandibular canine we can see the mesial contact area is near to the mesial incisal angle this is the mesial contact area we can see that the mesial contact area is near the mesial incisal angle this is the mesial incisal angle good another difference the cingulum of the mandibular canine is smooth and poorly developed the marginal ridges are less distinct and in general uh, the mandibular canine has a flat lingual surface while the in the maxillary canine the lingual surface is much developed so we can see in the mandibular canine the cingulum is smooth and less developed the marginal ridges are less distinct these are the marginal ridges are less distinct and in general the lingual surface all of the lingual surface is flat as compared to the maxillary canine now uh, we will talk about the chronology and the contact area the about chronology in the mandibular canine eruption of tooth occur by the age of 9 to 10 years and the root completed by the age of 12 to 14 years while in the maxillary canine eruption in the maxillary the eruption occur by the age of 11 to 12 almost two years after the mandibular one and the root completed by the age of 13 to 15 years and it is almost one year after the mandibular one now we will speak about the proximal contacts 
In the mandibular canine, the mesial proximal contact is located in the, in the incisal third. And we just speaked about that. We said that the mesial proximal contact is located near the mesial incisal angle. And the distal proximal contact is in the middle third. While in the maxillary canine, the mesial proximal contact is located in the junction of the incisal middle third and distal proximal contact is in the middle third. So, the difference in the contact area is only in the mesial proximal contact. It is located in the mandibular canine. It is located in the incisal third near the mesial incisal angle. While in the maxillary canine, the mesial proximal contact located in the junction of the incisal and middle third. That's all for the uh, and uh, for the permanent mandibular anterior teeth, the central incisal, the lateral incisal, and the canine. So, with this video, we uh, we completed the dental anatomy of the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth, and we will shift next to the premolars, the maxillary and mandibular ones. Thank you for watching, and uh, inshallah, I will see you in the next video.